Hey, what's up? Jin here from Code and Quick Tips. Today was the second part of my How to Shoot a Bullet in Slick 2D tutorial. In this tutorial, I will show you one of the two ways to handle multiple objects like a bullet in your game. Um, this way is considered by me as a classical way because we won't use dynamic structures like lists, but we will only use um, basic um, basic things like arrays. To start off, I use a project from the previous video. So if you haven't watched that, um, just go back in the in the playlist. Okay. To start off, I will delete our single bullet because we want more than one bullet in in that video. Okay. So where will we keep our bullets? In um, in this video, I will show you how to keep them in a simple array. So we will need a private bullet array that will keep our bullets. So set array should keep our bullets. But you may ask now, hey, how should we know how big the array must be? Because it's like we don't know if there are two bullets or three bullets that are displayed at out at the time. Yeah, and that's true. But in set technique, you just say, hey, I know what's the maximum of bullets. So if you say one bullet lives for two seconds and you can shoot up to four bullets per second, you can say we have a maximum of eight bullets since the player can shoot um, once. Because um, after that time, um, the bullets that were shot first will actually despawn. And so we have um, new space that we can use for a new bullet. So for, set, for this technique in that video, you must know um, what's the maximum count of bullets that will be displayed. And therefore we will need something like an, ra an rate of fire. So private static int let's call it fire rate. So set constant will be the time between the shots. So in my case I say 250 milliseconds so I will be able to shoot four bullets per second and if one bullet lives two seconds I have a maximum of eight bullets. So I can say set my bullet array bullets equals new bullet array with the size of 8 because I say hey I can't have more than 8 bullets so I just create an array with 8 bullets in it. Okay so to start off we will fill up the bullet array with like deactivated bullets that aren't displaying right now. So if we take a look at our bullet class we can see that a bullet can either be active or not and to achieve what I want to do right now we must fill up the array with inactive bullets and to do that I will just create a second constructor that will create an inactive bullet so active equals false in set constructor and if I now create a bullet with set constructor it will be an like empty bullet that won't be rendered it won't be updated okay um, in the render method we must add that it won't be rendered if it's not active I forgot that last lesson. So, there we go. Okay, now we have a bullet that can be created and that is completely um, deactivated, so it won't do anything. So we can just fill up our bullets array um, with those empty bullets or those useless bullets. So, and i equals zero, we will just iterate through the array, so i is smaller than bullets dot length r plus plus and therefore we will just fill up our bullets array with empty bullets so equals new bullet a new empty bullet or a new bullet that is inactive so now we must um, actually render all the bullets and update all the bullets and re render and update call and because all the bullets are filled up with a dummy object, all the bullets are um, not nil, so we can actually um, render and update them without a null pointer exception. So we can just iterate through our bullets array with a basic for iterator. So for every bullet um, B out of our bullets, we want to call the render method. There we go. 
and for every bullet um, out of our bullet, uh, for every bullet B out of our bullets, we want to call the update. So with set code, if we start with it, will uh, give me a sec. So you go. If I start it, it will just render nothing because we don't have any active bullets. So what's the next step? If we want um, to fire a bullet, we will need to fill the array with somehow an active bullet. And to do that, we, wa um, we need to know on what specific um, part of the array we need to fill the new bullet in. Because um, we always need to know if we want to fill in the bullet in, let's say, um, we want to fill in the bullet in the zero or in the first thing out of our array. And therefore we will have a variable that will be the current index um, where we are in our array. So let's say private int current. There you go. And we will start off with zero because that's where our array starts. We will also need a second variable to hold um, the delta or the delta time since the last shot so we can see if the player is allowed to shoot again. So private int delta equals zero again. And in every update call we will say delta plus equals t. So we will increase our delta in every update call with the delta time t. So we will actually know how big the delta in milliseconds is. Um, yeah, said how big the time from the last chart is. So we can actually now say if our delta is bigger than our fire rate, then we know hey, the player can shoot again. And then we could spawn a new bullet. So, how can we now like spawn a new bullet? It's quite easy. We know our current bullet where we want to spawn is zero. So we just say uh, bullets. Zero equals new bullet, and at that time we don't want a dummy bullet. At that time we want a real bullet. So we will shoot a bullet with the positions given. So vector three f. So the start position will be let's say zero zero, and a new vector three f for the direction. Um, yep, for the speed or for the direction of the bullet. Oh. 2f, sorry. <laughs> so you go. Um, and I will just say it will fly with 500 in the x and 100 in the y. So if we now take a look at that, you will see that the bullet sticks somehow here. And that's because it just gets always spawned at the place 0. And that's not good. We want to spawn it at the current place. So here we go. And now comes the tricky part, or the interesting part about the concept. We now spawn the bullet at position 0. So the next bullet will be spawned at position 1. And why do we do that? We will just cycle through our array with our spawn. So we will first spawn at 0, then spawn at 1, at 2, at 3, at 4, at 5, at 6, at 7. And then we will jump back to 0. And why do we do that? At the time where we jump back to 0, where we filled in the first bullet, the first bullet will actually be despawned, and therefore we can take the place in the array and replace it with a new bullet that is active. So we say current plus plus and increase it, and we also say if current is bigger or equal to our bullets dot length. So if we are um, over the index of the array, we just set the current to zero because then the um, element 0 isn't used anymore and we can overwrite it again. We will also say that our delta equals 0 again because um, yeah, we must set the delta from the last shot to 0 again otherwise we will shoot over and over as we did before. If we now take a look we will see that we actually shoot bullets out of the top left corner and that it works quite well I would say. If I slow down the bullets a bit, uh, let's give me a sec. Here, we should see that the bullets actually despawn after two seconds. Uh, but that won't do anything 
because um, always if the last bullet despawns, it gets replaced with a new bullet that spawns on the top here. So with that technique, you can actually use an array um, as a like dynamic placeholder um, for your bullets. If we now say that we uh, want the player to shoot, and we say gc dot get input dot is key pressed input dot key space, so that we will only shoot if the space bar is pressed. You should notice that it works just fine. We don't see all bullets, but you might think, hey, we always update, we always render all bullets, but that's, as, um, that's the point. We got the whole array filled up with bullets. They can either be active or inactive. And we just um, refresh um, one one bullet after another if we need to spawn a new. And if a bullet is inactive, it will still be called, but it won't do anything because the bullet is not, not active. So it won't render, it won't do anything with the bullet if it's inactive. And then, if it's inactive, we just replace it with a new bullet here if we need a new bullet. And that's the whole point of set technique. Um, one drawback of set technique is that it's not very flexible. If you want to say, hey, I want to have dynamic fail rates, it could be that there are 500 bullets at one time, but I don't want to always call 500 bullets, update and render, if there aren't those bullets. And for set cases, I have a second technique that I will show you in the next video, but I think, yeah, set technique is enough for set video. And as always, I hope you enjoyed and I would love to see some feedback in the comments about new video topics or about what you thought about that video. Yep, that's it. I, have you a lot, um, I hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time.